Hello and welcome to my channel Tummy Bliss. My name is Michaela and I am passionate about two things. One thing is food and the other one is well-being. So in the recipes that I introduce, I always combine those two or the food that I make um, I like it to be nutritious. Of course, I want it to be delicious. I want it to be easy to prepare and I want it to be beneficial to my body or my body after eating will feel good, energized and my tummy will be happy. Uh, we have been hearing a lot about the importance of gut health for our general well-being so um, I always try to use ingredients that are beneficial for my gut bacteria. And the other thing that we hear all the time is we must eat vegetables, we must eat vegetables, we must eat vegetables, seven cups of vegetables every day. And that's not necessarily always very easy, right? Uh, for that reason, this is um, another part of my intent uh, to use as much vegetables as possible in the recipes that I prepare. So, what's for dinner today? Thank you for joining me in making it. It's so much more fun to make it with other people than to do it all by myself, even if I don't know who you are. So today, uh, what I am making for dinner, I'm actually going to start with the side uh, in preparation, but what it's going to be is uh, it would be um, a sauteed swordfish um, in uh, herbs and lemon marinade. So that's going to be absolutely delicious. And to that, I want to add a side of this beautiful vegetable. It's kale. And a week or so ago, I discovered a farm uh, that is run uh, by a young couple um, and uh, they have dedicated themselves on, uh, you know, um, doing uh, sustainable farming, meaning that uh, they do things organic, they do not use all those chemicals that kill the topsoil. So they have been working on restoring the topsoil in their farm and it seems that they're having great results. Their vegetables are amazing. I got um, a box of fresh produce from them, so I want to use that in making my side uh, dish today. So again, amazing, beautiful uh, kale. Look how dark green it is. I'm sure that my tummy will love it. Kale is just, you know, so rich in fiber and other nutrients. But here's another thing that I'm sure my tummy will appreciate. Uh, this is um, a sunchoke or Jerusalem artichoke, depending on, um, you know, how you know it uh, uh, by name. Uh, and uh, the Jerusalem artichoke is very rich in inulin, uh, which is a substance, it's a kind of a fiber that our tummy bugs, they just love. So eating Jerusalem artichoke is extremely beneficial to our gut flora and it's delicious. So kale, Jerusalem artichoke, two excellent, um, you know, um, vegetables and then the last one is going to be um gosh garlic <laughs> how could i forget the name of my favorite favorite um ingredient i love garlic so we are going to combine this into one very simple dish that will complement the swordfish and let's start from this so the first thing of course is wash your um, kale and then let it dry a little bit. Uh, we don't want the kale to be uh, too wet because then it wouldn't roast well. And also um, scrub with a brush. Uh, I use a tawashi brush uh, or, or wash well with a sponge uh, your artichoke, Jerusalem artichoke. So the next thing to do would be to chop 
the Jerusalem artichoke. And I will do it in bite-sized pieces. This is what it looks from the inside. I don't know if you are familiar with this tuber. Uh, personally, I discovered it probably like a few months ago and it wasn't very readily available in Japan. It was possible to get it um, as a health food uh, in a powdered form, but I hadn't seen it much. Whoops, here I have still some soil left. So let me wash it, wash it away. So it's, it's kind of funny because once you know something, all of a sudden you start seeing it everywhere. Like for years, I've never noticed uh, Jerusalem artichokes being sold in, in stores. Now I see them all the time. And uh, for some reason, it seems that now is its season. So here I go and I'm chopping it into bite-sized pieces. If there are nodules here, you if you don't like them, you can just, you know, cut them off. That's okay. I'm not particularly concerned because this is organic produce, you know. So yeah, if, if there's some dark spots that are not very attractive or the choke has been hurt, you know, at some places, then you can just cut those off, but otherwise it's fine. So here I go and I cut it into bite-sized pieces. The next thing, the next thing that I will do, here's my baking pan. It's not very big. I suppose it's about 30 centimeters by 15 centimeters rectangle. So I will place my artichoke here and I will season it straight into the pan. So here it is. And the other thing is, um, let's see if this will help to break the garlic. So I'm going to take a few cloves of garlic that I won't, um, I won't take the shells off. I won't take the skin of the garlic. I will leave it the way that it is. And the only thing that I will do is, um, I wonder if you can see what I'm doing because of the kale, is I will make little slits on the side. Uh, wash it and then make slits on the side of the garlic and cut just the top here and put it in the pan together with the artichoke. So the reason why I'm not taking the, the skin of the garlic, actually there are two reasons why I'm doing that. And reason number one is that not everybody is crazy about garlic. I know that I am. I, I can eat garlic a lot. So there are no vampires at home. Um, and for those who do not like garlic, they still can enjoy the taste, the, the, the flavor, you know, without really having to bite into the garlic itself. And for those who do like, like me, when you leave the skin and you just you know you cut little slits here when you leave the skin on and the garlic is being roasted the shell kind of stews it inside so it becomes very nice and soft and sweet and i really like that so the next thing would be to season the garlic and the the artichoke just season it with a little bit of, um, sorry, of salt. And then if you like uh, spicy food, what you can do is again, you can use uh, some uh, red chili, dry red chili pepper flakes. 
and you know just sprinkle that um, on the top of the artichoke today i will not do it so the next thing that i will do is i will pour about um about one tablespoon of olive oil and then i will i will stir the artichoke and the garlic so they get coated and at the same time you know i will distribute the salt evenly and now that this is done i will bake the or roast whatever you prefer as a word uh, the artichoke for probably about 15 minutes and once the artichoke is relatively cooked then it's when i'm going to add the kale because the, arch the artichoke takes longer time to cook than the kale and i don't want my kale to burn so now it's time to roast the artichoke Now, while the artichoke is being roasted, I'm going to prepare the kale uh, to go into the oven as well. And as you can see, I'm taking this middle vein and then just, you know, cut it with your, tear it with your, with your hands, with your fingers into bite-sized pieces. They do not need to be very big. I just don't want the vein because it's very hard and not very delicious. So here we go. And again, tear it into pieces. It's really easy. If you have a little child, you can ask them to help you with tearing the kale. I'm sure that they will love it. And once your kale is torn into pieces and the, ve the veins have been removed then let's season it with a little salt probably like I would say just you know like the tip this is half um, a teaspoon and I probably used one third of that do not season too much because what happens is that the kale shrinks when you cook it and then what looks like a little salt on a lot of kale is going to become a lot of salt on a little kale and that's that's not good so i will also add here a dash of black pepper and i will pour about a tablespoon of olive oil again not extra virgin please just use ordinary olive oil once this is done use your hands if you don't want to make them dirty put one of those um, gloves and kind of you know how how do i describe this just um, use your hands to squeeze the kale and to mix it well with the oil so it is well coated and also the salt is evenly distributed and then uh, 15 minutes into uh, cooking the um, the, sun uh, the, the the sun choke we are going to add the kale mix it well just stir it well with the artichoke and the uh, the garlic so you know uh, it absorbs uh, the flavors from the garlic and the oil and the artichoke and then roast it for another um, probably between 10 and 15 minutes again it depends on your oven you don't want to burn your kale you want it cooked but you do not you know want to have kale chips that that wouldn't work well as a side for the fish okay so the artichoke the jerusalem artichoke has been cooked for 15 minutes it's semi-cooked now 
and it is the time to add the um, the kale and then stir well so the kale will absorb uh, some of the flavors from the garlic and the choke and then put back in the oven for another 10 to 15 minutes just watch your kale and be careful so it doesn't burn all right so it's time to get the fish ready it's late in the afternoon the sun is beginning to set so i want to get things ready for an early dinner and also in this way i can show you what uh, the end result is so here's my fish that has marinated for about uh, 30 minutes in the fridge and i am going to turn uh, the gas on and warm up a little olive oil probably about um, yeah i would say one tablespoon not really that much and i will place the fish in the pan and then we are going to saute it gently so i am going to put the fish to be sauteed and actually decrease the fire because I don't want a lot of oil jumping out of my pan and making a big mess. So Make sure that you stir the fish well so there's oil everywhere and it sautés well. Um, by the way, uh, just uh, if, if you don't have access to swordfish, you can use any other um, fleshy fish I would say maki maki will work very well um, also if you use cod you know cod filet that will that will work great I have done it with cod filet so many times and it's delicious I don't like it with tuna when tuna is sauteed sometimes mm, it has this I don't know, a little bit dry taste that I do not necessarily like. And of course, if you prefer salmon, it's going to be a totally different taste. If it is salmon, then I will probably not use herbs, but I will use just black pepper and salt to season it. And again, I will marinate it uh, for a while in lemon juice. That will take some of the oiliness um, from the salmon and actually yeah it will become quite delicious in the meantime as you can see my artichoke is ready as well so I just need to finish sauteing the fish and then I can plate it. I like to have a little bit of this color on it. So this is what I'm after. By the way, once the fish has been cooked, I'm just going to pour on the top of it the, the marinade and increase the fire. So it's very quickly seasoned one more time with the marinade. We're getting there. Uh, however, if you are not a, a fan of uh, lemon, if you don't like your fish very lemony, perhaps you should skip that. All right, now it's nicely browned and here I'm just going to pour the rest of the marinade. 
Oh, if you could just smell, it smells delicious. It just smells fantastic of herbs and lemon. And then we will add to that the garlic from the side. It's going to be great. All right. I believe that here we are done. So here it is. You have a restaurant style meal at home that is not only delicious, it's super nutritious and you will make your whole body happy. You're giving your body good protein, you're giving it good fiber, you're giving it micronutrients. It's just wonderful. Well, thank you for joining me on this video today. I hope that you try the recipe and if you do, uh, please write in the comments below what your experience was. Um, I will put in the description of the video the whole recipe. Oh gosh, this just smells so good. Uh, let me finish. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I will put the whole recipe um, in the description of the video and you can also find it uh, on my Facebook page, Tommy Bliss. I would love to hear feedback from you or if you are interested in learning how to cook something, it will be my pleasure uh, to show you how to do it. And if you like the video, please give it a like. Um, on YouTube and also subscribe to my channel to receive information where other videos are going to be published. Well, with this said, itadakimasu! This is what we say in Japan before we um, have our meal, which literally means I receive. And in this case, yes, I am receiving wonderful nourishment and also a delight for my taste buds. Sayonara, goodbye.